Are you tired of an ugly, stained, poorly illuminated work trailer? So was I. So today, that's all about to change. And I'm gonna show you what you can do to any trailer, wood floors, enclosed, construction trailer, landscaping trailer, it doesn't matter. We're gonna get the lights installed, gonna get the walls painted, and I'm gonna get this ugly, epoxy stained floor. We're gonna grind it, and we're gonna put the poly sparta coating on it that's gonna last a lifetime. So, if this is something you're interested in, make sure you like, subscribe, drop some comments below, tell me how I did. All right, folks, this should be everything we need to get the project completed today. Starting with right to left, most important PPE, 3M face mask. If you've been following along, you recognize that. We got my pro knees right here for the knee protection. Hearing aids because, uh, hearing protection because I am deaf. Some zip ties. We got my two part polyaspartic coating. Some brushes. We got some tape. The epoxy glide, a lint free 18 inch roller to put down the epoxy to the 7 inch Hiltzy dustless grinder that's going to be used to knock down the, uh, the heavy polyaspartic and epoxy that's already kind of spilt on the trailer. And then the palm grinder to uh, get everything finished off. So, knowing that, let's get some lights installed here to start. Oops. One, two, three, four. Oh my goodness, it's so much easier sitting here. Wow. All right, so it's roughed out. Just kind of give you guys a snapshot of how I'm doing this real quick. Um, fortunately, my trailer was kind of already pre-wired, not really hardwired, but there's a little extension cord on the uh, outside you plug into, which provides power to this, which gives us juice to that. We got a little bowl over the uh, workbench over there, but yeah. So now we've got uh, we've got four. It's so nice in here. I can finally see. See how ugly this thing is. Goodness gracious. Um, so yeah, the four is already kind of wired. Not too much to do with the electric here. So if you guys are looking for like a more detailed electrical video, um, I plan on doing. Being able to hook up, fortunately my, uh, my, my new truck has the, uh, I can plug an extension cord into the back of the truck to the outlet or the, to the plug in the outside of the door which would power it, but if I don't have that or I, you know, like my Tacoma, I'm going to hook that to the, uh, make it up to the battery of the car, I got to wire it to the uh, trailer plug. But I was going to take down, I was going to demo these shelves, but, not a demo, but just take them out and, and uh, Kind of reconfigure them, but I'm just gonna leave them up for now. I think I'm gonna make my uh, my folding workbench right down here. So, uh, Recut and maybe it's supposed to let up a little bit. But yeah, not too much else to do. What we're gonna do is just kind of let it kind of roughed out. I'm gonna tighten it up and uh, get the cords kind of buttoned up there, not dangling everywhere, and then start the uh, start the prepping, start the grinding. Like I said, after. Uh, now that we have light, we can kind of finally see what we're up against here. It doesn't really look like plywood under there or plywood right now. But yeah, this is the goal. Gonna grind all this down. And then uh, go to plywood. And then apply the uh, primer. Flake it, orb it, nice and blue. But I'm excited! It's gonna look super, super duper, super duper, super, super, super duper. So, back to the grind. Let's, uh, let's tighten it up.
hit me like that. Saw that thing so beautiful. She just hit my heart off. Full force and she got me like that. I be like that. Why you so fine? Got to make you mine. So hard to find. That's kind of what you want with any kind of coating, basically. Um, just a nice pore surface for it. The, uh, for the material to soak into. So, mm, good golly, that was a lot of epoxy. Mm, so it's, it smells delicious in here. Like burnt wood. A couple things you got to be careful of when you're grinding with that. Um, you always want to keep it moving in a circular motion. Always keep it level. If you hit it like that, you're going to get a divot. Um, you sit in one spot too long, you're going to start to burn up. So it smells good in here, but you can kind of see where, uh, especially with the material that was underneath there, I don't know if it's flammable or not. But uh, yeah, so always keep the, uh, you see the video, keep the grind here. Small circles, oh, you need to never stop. You want to dig into concrete, wood, whatever substrate you're dealing with. So, that is that. Let's get the walls painted. Halfway there. Oh, I gotta take off all these little. Okay, enough complaining. Enough of the enough of the yippee yap, let's do it. Alright. Prep is done, vacuuming's done, it's time to paint. Going with the uh Alspar signature interior paint primer. Gonna go with the uh whoosh, elephant gray finish. Uh let's get this trailer painted. Sublime, super fine, she was never lying, strutting in the hills or her slides. Either way, eyes on her every single day, week, year, everyone wondering how she does it with no fear of that confidence. Was it heaven sent? Does it come within? Does it come run out? I don't know. She'll just have them running out and in. Man, they want to sin, talking deadly sin with Mrs. Lady. I don't understand why she is. I'm like All right, 
everything you need to polysmartic epoxy your trailer for. All right, left to right. Where's my finger? Shoo! We've got the mixing drill. Number A, number B, epoxy. We're gonna mix up some brushes, the fiberglass tape, epoxy glide, uh, 18 inch roller, gloves, Warby Flake, spike shoes, squeegee, mixing bucket, acetone, and then all the bucket, we're gonna pour everything in. So, examining a little bit closer, everything you need. Gonna need a good mixing drill to mix up the two part epoxy. So, what we're gonna do, this is part A, intermediate coat, Holler if you need a discount code. Concrete Floor Solutions, happy to help you out. Great, great material. So, we're gonna mix up the epoxy, add our acetone, and then ready to um, pretty much lay it down with the squeegee. From here, we're gonna go to our epoxy glide, really good high quality, lint-free roller, highly recommended. Wooster, some of the best. Um, this is gonna be our little touch-up roller, slash along the edge, slash when we lay down our fiberglass mesh, we're gonna roll over it with, uh, with that roller right here. This is what I was talking about. This is the um, Art Force, Art Force, Art Force, Fiber Tape. Now we're gonna cut these uh, self-adhesive, basically we're gonna lay them over the, uh, the, the joints. So we need it to be flexible. Um, epoxy's gonna be hard, right? So, um, especially the stuff you get from the uh, store, Home Depot and Home Cheapo, uh, it's a water-based epoxy. So after it evaporates, it becomes very brittle. All the water's gonna evaporate within the first couple of days. So, enough science. Moving over, safety gloves, of course. Spike shoes, a couple things with these. You always wanna make sure they're clean. Sometimes you get boogers on there. I call them schmussies. You see a schmussie right there. A schmussie's gonna get in the final coating, um, and you do not want that when you're doing your own. Not the end of the world, but you catch them anyway. When you, um, when you do your poly smart, you can get little boogers in there. Uh, flake of choice, going with Orbit, because we have leftovers, and it's free! A little bully. We have three pounds. According to our calculations, I should need four for a full flake. But I think that's just a little aggressive. I think we should be able to do a heavy full flake application on the floor. Uh, so tone right here, nothing fancy. This is just going to help uh, reduce, going to cut down the... Um, the solid percentage from 100% epoxy solids right here to 93%, which like I mentioned earlier, it's gonna absorb into these little scratch marks. You can finally see the scratches that we want to achieve as with, with any coating, um, concrete, wood, anything like that. Nothing's gonna bond if it doesn't have a pattern or, or deep. If you look that under a microscope, it's gonna be, uh, that's a planetary grinder. Okay. So, Next thing we see me do, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna start on the nose. Psh, psh, psh. Squeeze your way down, just like you do seal coat a driveway. Once that's done, throw in our flake and then um, call it a day. It's about five o'clock. Been at this for a while, but uh, very happy with it so far. Very, very happy with it. So, enough dilly dally. Let's transform it. All right, so we're at the final step here. What we're gonna do, um, basically do is to mix up the two-part epoxy, we're gonna start with part A, part B, um, put that in the five-gallon bucket, into that we're gonna add our, uh, we calculated 7%, which was like roughly nine ounces of um, acetone to uh, fit up the epoxy. So once we're done with that, um, mix it in here thoroughly. What's key with this here, before it gets too noisy and I won't be able to talk, um, Along the sides, up and down, constantly. At least two to three minutes. You really want a thorough, nice mixture, um, nice and viscous. Um, once that's done, uh, you have about 45 minutes working time. That's key to remember. Make sure you have everything laid out. Everything where you're gonna step off the trailer, where you're gonna be working, everything, soup to nuts, lined up. Um, it can set on you pretty quickly. So that would be my biggest, uh, my biggest takeaway is just make sure everything's ready to go. You got your brushes, you got your rollers, your squeegees lined up, um, extension cords, everything plugged in, taped off. The last thing you want to be doing is scrambling and um, running out and trying to get something and um, getting you're going to get some boogers, contaminants when you step off the trailer. When you step onto something, you're going to bring stuff back in. So that's a chance for a rock or a pebble just to make your life a little bit harder. Um, 
So uh, that and plan where you're going to start, where you're going to end. Uh, for this one, I'm going to start off the top. Usually, it's like a driveway. I can step off. I can work my way out the egress there. I'm going to cut into corners. Small brush is fine. Um, once the epoxy is mixed up, I can take 45 minutes. That's about it. Um, maybe a little bit longer, depending on the region and temperature. Um, so I plan to mix it up in here, pour a little bit off into this little uh, edging bucket right here, go along the edges, get everything touched up, because basically what it is epoxy, and when this, when this chemistry starts to set in, the flakes, that's what's going to adhere into it. So don't worry about flakes getting on the, uh, the new walls we just painted or anything like that. Um, what Really, where you put the epoxy material is where the flakes are going to stick. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to epoxy the joints first, get those set. Um, and then uh, work my way, trim it first, just like you would any any vertical wall you're painting in your house. And then uh, squeegee, gonna work my way left to right. Once my once I lay it down, you know I'll probably lay down about half. I'll probably need like maybe two gallons, three gallons for this garage, uh, driveway. <sighs> driveway, good God, it's a trailer, Roy. It's a trailer. Um, so once the uh, you're gonna squeegee left to right, east to west. Um, come back in with the back roll. Back rolling is key. I'll explain a little bit more um, when I'm actually doing it. Uh, so once I squeeze you left or right, I'm going to come back in. I'm coming to come vertically. Long, nice, even strokes. Make it nice and <laughs> you're going to hear that sticky sound kind of pop up. And that's what you're going to want. That's, that's what's going to kind of like pull up the fibers. That's going to pull up the paint. That's when you're going to broadcast your chips in there. It's going to give a nice, uh, nice profile for them to fall in there. And we're going to do a, a full broadcast. So that basically means we're going to disperse the chips until rejection. Um, like I said, I have three pounds, call for four pounds, but I think I'll be able to get away with it. Um, if worst case, it's a, uh, it's a heavy flake. Um, you know, aside from the uh, aesthetics, of the vinyl chips, um, protection. It's gonna add another layer of protection. Um, the, uh, the chips are about, depending on the, you know, the profile and the, the size you get, um, each chip's gonna be a little bit thicker, so it's just gonna add a nice little layer of protection to the, uh, to the trailer forward from the, to stop from the dings. The dog's over there. Um, stop from the dings, the scratches, we'll see how well it holds up. Uh, but yeah, I think it's gonna turn out well, so let's get mixing.
right, everybody, back on day three. Most important and then a final step. We are here to flake, scrape, vacuum, and then apply our uh, single component polyaspartic top coat. All right, so what do we got? Left to right. We got a scraper, metal scraper. You want something kind of heavy? Some kind of just, we're gonna lightly scrape over any excess flake that might be sticking up. I'm not sure if you can see any, uh, the epoxy flake, but uh, you want to scrape just like, a, you know, these things are uh, vinyl chips, so if they stand on a sharp edge, they're kind of like razor blades after you apply the polyaspartic. So we're going to scrape them down. Um, then we are going to, after we scrape, we're going to use this vacuum, craftsman. Handy dandy, didn't feel like turning on the generator to get the other one out, so that's fine. I'm just going to scrape up and vacuum the excess flakes. Um, from there, we got our six inch roller we're going to use for the small edging, get underneath the tight spots. Our big epoxy glide rooster roller. Uh, that is a uh, very lint free. Um, it's designed to hold up to different chemicals and uh, compounds versus dissolving nap heads of the other quality. Uh, we're going to wear our booties when we're doing this because I'm a neat freak. Any contaminants you put in right now are basically will be sealed in. Jurassic Park style, like the mosquito in the ember thing. Um, you're gonna just, it'll, it'll, it'll embed in there and it's always gonna be there. So I like to remain nice and clean. Any contaminants, any chance for schmutzies coming up, getting back in the trailer when you're doing the uh, top coat, not fun. I can't stress this enough. Wear your mask, wear your safety, wear your PPE. I, I took it off at the last minute as I was finishing up, last job, I dropped the roller. Bam, splatter. Didn't know it until like five hours later when my eyes started burning and I didn't have it on. And I looked in the mirror closely and I saw a little black speckle of epoxy. And if I was a genius, I would have been wearing this, what I, which I made my investment in. And for the next 24 hours, I was in agony and pain, worrying if I was gonna go blind because I have epoxy curing and setting up in my eye. Uh, luckily, was not the case and came out the next morning, a little sore, a little red, but I'm able to see. So I can't stress this enough, especially with this polyaspartic, I, this stuff smells. It smells so bad. It's not a good smelling product at all. So needless to say, the, uh, the 3M filters are gonna help filter that out and then full face protection with anything. You're doing anything concrete, any chemicals, wear your safety mask. Rubber gloves, spike shoes, I'm gonna put it down. Uh, I'm not gonna vacuum in these, so I'm gonna scratch it up. I didn't say it last time, I didn't notice it. Um, when you're stepping into the plywood, I was digging and I was leaving, this, I weighed 100 and some odd, 85 pounds, uh, don't judge me. Um, but it was digging in and leaving scratches in the, in the plywood and you saw little little pieces of wood. Um, so have to step more ginger next time and just especially if you're working on wood, OSB or a, a soft substrate, walk gingerly. Uh, going over here, so this is the top clear coat that's going to be the most important part. CFS, concrete floor solutions, probably aspartic, some of the best stuff on the market. Walkable in 24 hours, drivable in 20, uh, 48 hours, but I'm going to give it two days to cure. Happy to give you all a discount on this. Just hit me up, drop a comment, and I'll be uh, happy to share my, uh, my vendor and get you guys set up on a kit. Any questions you guys might have for any concrete wooden floors, I'll walk you through the process. Um, Great team, great team over there. Um, so yeah, that is the polyaspartic we're gonna do. We won't gonna need a gallon, less than a gallon. I think it's like 120 square feet per gallon. So I'm only gonna fill up maybe two to three of these uh, quart buckets in here. Final step, once the clear polyaspartic is put down, it's called aluminum oxide. So what aluminum oxide does, you can kind of see the grit, is after we put down the polyaspartic, after we squeegee it in, I'm gonna take the aluminum oxide and I'm gonna flick it up in the air like that, and that's gonna settle in between the pores of the flakes. It's gonna have grit, traction. Um, aluminum oxide is, uh, I believe it's a nine on the uh, Mohs hardness scale, meaning um, how they measure the hardness of minerals, diamonds, and so forth, this is zero to 10. Talc being your softest material, uh, diamonds being the number 10, the hardest, and Aluminum oxide is number nine, and they use this in all sorts of different products, toothpaste, um, abrasives, you can find it pretty much in, in, in anything, sand uh, blasting equipment, wheel grinders, it's very hard. Um, 
looking very diamond grade, but it's going to basically just add traction, um, add like just another level of protection to the floor, and then uh, yeah, anti slip, anti spoolage, and, and so forth. So, not much else to see here, folks. This is a uh, this is everything you would need to apply the polyaspartic top coat. You don't need everything here. You could probably get away with some, you know, a little lesser quality rollers and so forth, but don't skimp on the PPE. So, next time you see this beauty, she's going to be shinier than she is now, stronger than she is now, and better than ever before. So, let's get to it. Done and done. Day 367. Uh, in case you uh, skipped ahead to the end and you haven't been paying attention, shame on you. This is not what the trailer looked like before. This is what the trailer looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. Uh, basically, we ground down the floor, applied a two-part uh, epoxy primer. Then we did flake, orbit color, then a polyaspartic top coat. So, I mean, this is really where the polyspartic shines, no pun intended. You're not gonna get this from the, uh, from the store-bought kits. That's the clear coat on top that's gonna add the scratch resistance. Basically, you slide right over top. It's kinda hard to see. Scratch, scratch proof, impact resistant, stain resistant. You spill oil on here, whatever paint, you get it up right away, it's not gonna stain. It's gonna add traction. You can kind of see the eggshell finish here. That's what we're going for. That's where that aluminum oxide really shines. Anti-slippage. I mean, you try to run and you stop. There's no, there's no slipping on this. And plus, the luminosity difference. It's gonna stay like this for years. It's gonna, it's not gonna dull. Everything's just gonna reflect off the bottom there. Reflect, reflect or refract. I'm not sure which one that is. Drop a comment in below. Let me know which one it was. But super happy with the way it turned out. Obviously, with any project, what I could have done differently. Um, I, I kind of wish I ran the electric a little bit better. This is kind of just hodgepodge to start. I plan on putting chargers in here, workbenches, and so I didn't really, it's gonna get rerun anyway. So um, from there, other issues. I kind of mentioned I wish I did a full flake application. There are a couple holidays, as I like to call them. My wife thinks I'm crazy, but I can spot the difference between like right here, just a lack of flake versus the rest of the floor. And I knew that kind of going into it, that um, I only had three pounds, I needed four pounds. And other than that, I might have taken out these rings for the holders, for the tie downs, for the equipment. However, I figured taking them out and putting them back in, I'm gonna jeopardize the integrity a little bit. So I just left them in and taped them off, so. Other than that, super, super happy with the way it turned out from the way it was before. Again, you can do this all yourself. You don't necessarily need to grind it down to the way I'd ground it with the 7-inch uh, seven -inch, seven -inch grinder. You could, be, you could definitely get away with just putting a, a heavy scratch on it with your sand orbital grinder 25 grit. 
but that is the gist of it that's how you transform your trailer floor if you paid attention and watched all this i sincerely appreciate you guys it means the world to me i, uh, I promise you i'm coming out with more content this is just the uh this is just a side channel you haven't even we haven't got river city the actual uh, business channel going so like subscribe let me know how i did stay tuned for more updates this is the last you're going to see the trailer like this without the razzle dazzle i got razzle dazzle coming going to get some electric reels hose reels so this is going to be the uh the last you see it like this i appreciate you guys tuning along for the journey it means the world to me and uh we'll see you on the next one